Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Mike Malaska. Hey, Mike. Brendan, how are you? Good to see you again. Mike was the PGA Teacher of the Year, and he is a great instructor that I really trust. Mike, uh, when we were doing our, our beginner um, video, right. one of the steps that you liked people to do when they're first learning golf, and I think this is an important point even for tour players all the oh, way yeah. up to, probably. Um, you did this kind of staggered stance drill right. where the, the right foot came back. Right. Then we got some comments uh, on YouTube that it, it didn't seem to gel with uh, the idea we saw in other videos of you with the idea of parallel left. Parallel left. So, okay. so how, what are we missing there? Okay, well see. Here's don't the, most people set up shut and then come over? It is the, right, well yeah. what they set up shut with is their shoulders. So okay. when I put sticks down on the ground, there's my target line and I say, what's this for? And most everybody says, well that's for my feet. And I go, well, it could be. However, this is more for your eye line and your shoulder line to be parallel to your start line. So whether my feet are this way, or my feet are this way, or wherever my feet are, my shoulders and my eye line stays parallel to my start line. Now, if you stagger your stance, so if you drop your foot back and your shoulder comes with you, so now your shoulders and your feet are in, now we're in trouble. Yeah. Because you're trying to get your circle of your swing to be on an inclined plane and you want it working this way. If all of a sudden my shoulders are this way, okay, now my arms are going to do this. So now I would hit the ball way out to the right. So now what happens is people then correct that by this over the top move, trying to get the ball to go back to the target. Percentages wise of just golfers on, out on the range when you go to like a driving range. Yeah. What, what is the normal way that, that most amateurs line up? Well, what happens to them is regardless of where they put their feet, they aim their shoulders way over to the right and they take the club in and then they have to come back around on it to hit it at the target. So they aim right with their shoulders, yeah. take the club back, and now if they swing anywhere near their shoulder line, they're going to hit it way right. Yeah. So they make one swing that does that, and so then the next swing they aim the same, take the club back, and then they go, well, the target's over there. Yeah. So then they twist and then somebody They only says, make that mistake once. Where once or twice. Yeah, they and then, twice, then, yeah. they, then you override, your brain goes, well, th that's not going at the target. So then you get to the top of your swing and then it tries to get the club to go to hit the ball at the target. So then you're over the top. So says, well, now you're over the top. So what are you? Well, it all starts with a misalignment, mm -hmm. a misaim with your shoulders and your eyes. Yeah. Now, percentages wise of amateurs, Percentages wise, how many are aimed with their shoulders too far right, would you say? Probably 80 to 90 percent. Now, on tour, and the guys on tour, and, and uh, the guys, even when you, when you were playing tour events, where do they normally have their shoulders lined up? Either parallel or left. Okay. Why is it better to err to, to the left side for your shoulder lineup? If your shoulder lines left, so all of a sudden, if my shoulders are aimed what looks to be or is actually left to my target line, mm -hmm your brain is going to go, okay, I got to hit the ball out to the right of where I'm aimed. So you're going to tend to get turned more and you're going to tend to stay turned longer if you think the target's out to the right of where you're aimed. Okay. If you think the target's to the left of where you're aimed, you're not going to turn and you're going to unwind early. Mm -hmm. So that's why if, if you see tour players air, even now, they'll air aim left, with, especially with their shoulders because then the target looks out to the right, so that's gonna make them get turned and it's gonna make them stay turned longer mm -hmm. because their brain says, so the target's out to the right, I better not twist. Right, right. So if you get aimed right, you're gonna twist yeah. with your shoulders you, because your, your brain's going, wait a minute, the target's not over there, it's over here, so then you do this stuff. So, yeah, it's like back over my shoulder. Exactly. This way. Yeah. So good players learn, the picture they see is they set up when I look at that black flag, which is what this is aimed at, when I set up from my eyes, because my eyes are inside my shoulders, okay? So when I set up to the ball, it looks to me like my shoulders are aimed way over here at this far left yellow flag. Now yeah. they're not. If I did this and I put my eyes right over my shoulders, I'd go, okay, that looks pretty good. But as soon as my eyes go out in front of my shoulders, now all of a sudden it looks like my shoulders are aimed over there and the path and the, the ball looks like I have to hit the ball way to the right of this red flag to actually make it go at the black flag. So there's a lot of visual 
difficulties in the game that if people don't understand it right up front, they'll fight misalignment over the top forever because it's a picture. It's a right. bad picture. Right. So if if one of uh, our Be Better golfers has seen their now they they've been smart enough to film themselves, even on the course, yeah. even more so than the range, and they can see. Yes, this is me in a nutshell. I got my shoulders left, I'm swinging right. What's a good drill or a good setup station or something for them to do to start to retrain their brain to start seeing things that won't look right to them but will be more in aligned with reality? Well, the first thing is you got to get another stick here. Okay. And this stick goes on your target line out in front. Okay, now when you get set up to the ball, the other thing is you have to learn to come into the ball from this angle. Most amateurs come in from here and they aim their bodies first, then they try to aim the club. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you watch good players, they come up, they come in from this angle, they aim the club face, and then they set their body up to fit. Now all of a sudden now I'm starting to see, okay, if I've got to hit the ball at that black flag, it's got to go over this yellow stick, which looks like, it looks like if I hit that ball over that yellow stick, it looks like it's going to go over that red flag. So it's 20 yeah. yards right of the target. Yeah, as I'm standing in line with it, it's perfectly in line with the flag. As I take one yard to the left, now... It's even further, okay. Yeah. So the longer the club, so here's my driver. So now if I'm standing here with my driver, and I look at the top of that stick relative to that black flag, it looks like if I hit the ball over that stick, it's going to go 40 yards right of that black and white flag, but it isn't. So you, you have to start learning to practice, get set up, set up with your shoulders parallel to this line, which is going to look like they're way left. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to trust a picture that says if I start the ball over that stick or slightly to the right of it, it's actually going to go pretty much at the black and white flag. Oh yeah. So it, it, if you don't train your brain, train your eyes to see the correct picture, when you get on the golf course, what's going to happen is you start, I can't tell you how many times I see people set up and they get set up pretty good and then they look at the target and they go, yeah, and then they, they start in the they, shuffle. Yep. Well, the shuffle is because they're trying to get a picture that looks right. It doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. You have to understand what it has to look like to make it actually be correct. And it, it looks off. It yeah. doesn't look right from your eyes. Now, somebody yeah. standing behind you goes, oh, you're perfect. And you go, oh, this can't be right. This feels terrible. OK, yeah, because it doesn't look correct because your eyes aren't directly over the target line. Right. You're, you're inside of it. So your path looks like it has to come too much from the inside because your eyes are this side of your path. And your body looks like it has to be aimed over here because your eyes are on that side of your body line. Right, right. So if you don't train this and learn to trust this picture out here, right. this is what tour players see. They see a hole. They see where they want the ball to start. And they've hit so many balls, they get set up, and they've learned to trust what this picture looks like. So when they set up on the golf course, they know where the target is, they know what this has to look like, and they know where they have to start the ball to get it to go at the target. They've, they've trained themselves over and over again to trust a picture. Amateurs, the picture they trust is way off. And so when they get on the course, they go to what they think is correct visually. It's wrong. Yeah, and I think from uh, something that your friend Jack Nicholas has said with the intermediary target, I think this works a lot better when you now you're putting it like 12 15 feet in front of you rather than people put it just like a few inches in front and it's very easy to, well, to it, pull yourself out. well and the other thing too is the, the other thing that's mis that's that's a, a problem see when you look up you're you're looking up here in the air right so this looks different than that spot does oh yeah mm -hmm. okay so so when people people say this well i use my intermediate target i go that's great so they come up and they do this and they look at their spot yeah. and they get lined up and they're really pretty good and then they go like this and then they look at the target. Now as soon as your eyes go from the ball and they go to the target, see it's trying to connect a line from there to the target. This isn't, <laughs> that's not what it sees. It sees something way over here. Yeah. So if I actually started that ball, so if I set up here now 
and I looked and I actually started the ball what looks like where it has to go to go with that black flag, the ball would go right there, which is about 20 yards left of the flag. Yeah. That ball started left of this stick. Well, why? When I'm here, that stick doesn't look right. It looks like I got to start it about six or eight inches left of that stick to make it go with that black flag, but I don't. So again, you know, people start getting into, I'm over the top and I go, okay, why? Swing more from the inside. Whoa, 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 time out here. Why are you over the top? A big part of over the top is a bad concept visually of where your body has to be and what the path has to be to actually start the ball at the target. If you don't fix that visual concept, you're gonna come over the top for your entire life. So you think someone that's, that's watching this video and is over the top, you think if they're really disciplined about their practice station and getting their eyes lined up, they're gonna make huge progress towards oh, No question. It. Okay. One of the best teachers I ever had, Joe Nichols, what he used to make us do to exaggerate this, he'd have us, he'd have us aim at a target and then he'd say, okay, now I want you to hit the ball way over to the right. So he'd have you actually really exaggerate, hit something out to so the right. So from the stance you have to go straight at it. He'd either, have you, right. he'd either have you stand here and then hit it way out to the right and then gradually work the ball more back to the target line until you found your feel for path. Mm -hmm. Or he'd have you stand and aim way left of where this was aimed. So he'd have you stand like this. Yeah. And then he'd say, okay, now hit the ball at the black flag. Well, now all of a sudden you had to make this big reroute back underneath to make the ball go at the black flag. But you started to get a feel for yeah. relative to your picture. Well, this is an interactive show, so I'll try that. Okay, so what would you like to see me do here, Mike? We'll try, try that. Well, aim, way, aim left with everything. Like as if I'm going to be aiming like at the sprinkler going yeah. off there? Yep. So aim there. Okay, now you're going to make a swing, but you got to hit the ball at that black flag. All right. So that's the task. Yeah, that's tough. Okay. Well, no, which you, I guarantee you're not going to twist out of the top. You're going to get turned. You're going to stay turned because if you didn't, if you didn't, you'd pull it. Okay. So your brain goes, uh-oh, I'm aimed way left. Mm -hmm. and the target's way out to the right, which is just the yeah. opposite of what everybody does. That was a fade that landed right on the stick. Okay, cool. so, so it's interesting. It, again, your brain's a taskmaster. Yeah. You give it the correct task and you challenge it, it starts eliminating anything and everything not relevant to the task. So if you aim way left and the target's out to the right, yeah. Your brain's going to go, okay, first of all, if I've got to make the ball go over there from here, I'm going to have to get turned and if I start down, all of a sudden that doesn't have any relevance to the target being over there. Right. So then you go here and you stay there and you make the club come in. So all of a sudden, just visually setting it up different, it changes dramatically what your swing does or doesn't do because of your desire to go to the target. Right. You aim right, you're coming over the top every time because yeah. your subconscious is going to get to the top and go, the target's over here, so it does this. Yeah. If you get to the top and the target's over there, it's going to go, oh man, I got to stay there or I am not have no chance of hitting it at the target. Guys, if you have any questions about this, put them in the comments below. I'll make sure that uh, Mike sees them. Also, you can check out your website, right Mike? MalaskaGolf.com. Lots of really cool in-depth info on there. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Also hit that post notifications bell. So as we do live videos, you'll get notified because uh, it's the only way you'll see it because then I delete them after the live broadcast is over. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.